Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished visitors, honored guests, and those in attendance virtually. On behalf of Colonel Thomas Stamp, commander of the 48th Medical Group, welcome to RAF Lakenheath. The invocation of the 48th Inpatient Operations Squadron and the 48th Operations Squadron Change of Command. I am Senior Airman Thomas Schwartz, and I will be your narrator for today's inactivation ceremony. We'd like to take this opportunity to recognize some distinguished guests in the audience today and attending virtually. Please hold your applause until everyone has been recognized. Dr. Hillary Stamp, spouse of Colonel Thomas Stamp. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Deborah McFarland, spouse of Lieutenant Colonel McFarland and their children, Annika, Anson, and Finley. Timothy Codwell, spouse of Lieutenant Colonel Codwell and their children, Sila and Bryn Codwell. Commander of the 48th Fighter Wing, Colonel Jason Camilletti and his wife, Meredith. Vice Commander of the 48th Fighter Wing, Colonel John Stratton and his wife, Tara. Command Chief of the 48th Fighter Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Mark Shokoff and his wife, Lori. RAF Commander, Squadron Leader, Jamie Turnbull. Commander of the 48th Operations Group, Colonel Sean Lowe. Commander of the 48th Maintenance Group, Colonel S Stephen Collin. Commander of the 48th Mission Support Group, Colonel Christopher Leonard. Honorary Commander of the 48th Inpatient Operations Squadron, Dr. April Brown. Honorary Commander of the 48th Surgical Services Squadron, Dr. Stephen Dunn. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome to all commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, and the men and women of the Liberty Wing who are watching virtually for this special occasion. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Sean McFarlane will relinquish his command of the 48th Inpatient Operations Squadron. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the British National Anthem and the singing of the American National Anthem by Captain Ginny Sue DeWall, followed by an invocation by Chaplain Jason Raines. At this time, I invite you to join me in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the breath of life, for strength to endure, and for the abundance of blessings you pour out on us daily. Today, we gather to honor and celebrate the accomplishments of Lieutenant Colonel McFarland and to welcome 
Lieutenant Colonel Caldwell in this ceremony. As we deactivate the 48th IPTS and these two change command, we are grateful for the past successes and pray for continued achievement for Lieutenant Colonel McFarland and his family, Annika, Anson, and Finley, as they move to the 48th Operational Medicine, Med Medical Readiness Squadron. Bless them for their efforts and continue to posture them for growth as they lead others in the care of airmen and families. We also pray for Lieutenant Colonel Caldwell as she takes over command. We pray that you bless her with vision, insight, and creativity. We welcome her and her family, Timothy, Sila, and Bryn, as they join this new team of warriors. Bless them in all they hope to accomplish during their tenure. We ask for your guiding hand to be upon each of these families during this transition. Bless now our time together and shower the men and women of the Surgical Operations Squadron with grace. We pray for these and all things in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Rains. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the presiding officer for today's ceremony, commander of the 48th Medical Group, Colonel Thomas Stan. All right, good afternoon. What a great day it is. Uh, Colonel Camaletti, Colonel Stratton, Chief Shulkoff, thanks for joining us uh, virtually here, uh, as well as the Liberty Medics that uh, aren't able to, be, to, uh, to come down. So I uh, appreciate that very much. We'll keep our comments here about the IPTS deactivation fairly short since we do have two ceremonies to go through uh, with this. For those that are wondering about the inactivation, this is something we've had in works for a number of months, uh, actually more than a year that we've had in place. And uh, we had an opportunity to do some realignment over a year ago and uh, had a very interesting conversation with Colonel McFarland and said, we've got a pediatrician in charge of a surgical squadron. Do you want more to do? And he said, Sure, I'll take another 40 folks as well as uh, an inpatient mission, we'll stack it on. Ultimately, what it's offered us is it's less of a stand down of a squadron and more of an integration of our functions. And that's really what we found. And this is what we're setting up for Colonel Caldwell and for, for her command team, is that we've taken those functions and we've gotten rid of a lot of the they, because they're not all the same, part of the same squadron. So we're not having the surgeons in the PACU having tiffs with the inpatient units or vice versa because they are all under one roof. And as Sean has demonstrated on a couple of occasions, there's been some personnel flow in order to, to work things out. Uh, some challenges that we were facing in the inpatient squadron previously because of their relative isolation have now been largely taken care of because of this integration with the functions, the personnel, the personalities, and, and very much because of the leadership of Colonel McFarland. So, uh, it is a little bit of a sad day anytime you retire a squadron and stand one down. Uh, there's definitely some nostalgia to go with it. Uh, but in this case, I think it only brings goodness to the Surgical Operations Squadron and to what Colonel Caldwell is going to bring to the team. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Sean McFarland will now address his command for the last time. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, Colonel Camaletti, Colonel Stratton, Chief Sholkoff, Squadron Leader Turnbull, Group Commanders, Squadron Commanders, Superintendents and First Sergeants, as well as the Honorary Commander, uh, Dr. Brown. Thank you for joining us virtually. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Colonel Stamp, thank you for presiding today. And thank you for your vision, which made us a bigger and better SGCS by incorporating IPTS into us over a year ago. To our projos, Captain Bellow, Senior Airman Roby, and uh, Staff Sergeant Paxton, thank you so much. Um, these, these kind of events, especially two for one during COVID, is not a small event and doing a Facebook Live on top of it, a great job. Today is a happy and sad event. Uh, today we retire a squadron with a rich history that lasts over 13 years, which you will hear about in just a moment. However, with this deactivation, we also complete a process that we started over a year ago to make a bigger and better surgical operations squadron. Previously, the inpatient squadron, IPTS, was a squadron of around 50 personnel and two flights, the MSU and the MCU. Most of the admitting providers for those squadrons were not a part of that squadron. In fact, many of them were part of my squadron, Surgical Operations Squadron. So the integration makes sense, both functionally and from a personnel standpoint. Now, though IPTS was small in size, the squadron was large in accomplishments, and I'm going to mention a few of those. 
They were the USAFE Inpatient Patient Safety Program Award winner. They are USAFE's only inpatient hospital and only ICU capability for the Air Force to include CCAT missions which are ready to deploy at a moment's notice to support our warfighter. They are the patient or USAFE's only OB uh, labor delivery unit that is delivering babies every single day even during COVID and one of the busiest in the Air Force as a matter of fact. They are the first overseas hospital to receive the Safe Sleep Gold Level Award from an, a national accrediting agency, the first one ever. In addition, they are IBCLC accredited for lactation services. I'll give it a minute for, uh, for uh, the sound of uh, freedom if it comes by. For lactation services, which is a unique thing for a hospital this size, and it's a credit to this organization. Truly, this squadron thrived under their last true commander, which is not me. Though I held the G-Series orders, the last true commander was Colonel Marilyn Thomas, who's currently Hawk 52 at Kunsan uh, Air Force Base uh, and the medical group commander there. Under her leadership, the MCU and MSU flights thrived, and this squadron of 50 was large in stature and accomplishments in spite of its small size. Both her and all the members of IPTS deserve the credit for this squadron and for the accomplishments which have significantly contributed to SGCS's success. Then in July of 2019, Colonel Stamp and the leadership team decided that we were going to combine IPTS and SGCS into one squadron. We we're going to make it a bigger and better squadron. Initially about 175 personnel, now SGCS is about 155 personnel. Though that's a good sized squadron, it never really felt like um, things were done. It felt like something was unfinished. And that's because our first bid at combining IPTS and SGCS was denied by the Air Force Medical Service. So to today, though we do stand down IPTS, we actually are merging and unifying a squadron that really has been that way for over a year. Though some may be sad to see it go away, the excellence that the IPTS members have brought to SGCS will continue in the future and has continued to significantly contribute to SGCS's success up to this point. It allows us to do what we set out to do over a year ago and make a bigger, better surgical operations squadron. And we do it by acknowledging what IPTS has given and moving forward with what SGCS is going to give. The IPTS motto of we care for the best will continue to be relevant and has continued to shown through as part of the surgical operations squadron. I find it incredibly fitting that today is the day that we finally unify this squadron as I then give this full and unified squadron on to my successor who is ready and capable to do the job. It has been my honor and privilege to serve the men and women of IPTS and as much as it's sad for me to see this type of squadron go down, I am very, very proud of the fact of what it brought to the fight and what the people will continue to bring to the fight as part of the surgical operations squadron here at RAF Lake and Heath. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please stand for the inactivation and flag furling. The 48th Inpatient Operations Squadron stood up for the first time on the 19th of July, 2007, consisting of the multi-service and maternal child care inpatient flights supporting USAFE's largest and premier medical treatment facility. The 48th Inpatient Operations Squadron holds true to its motto, Optimus Caramus, which translates to, we care for the best. Providing healthcare services to over 37,000 Air Force personnel and their families across three wings and enabling the mission of three combat commands. The mission of the 48th Inpatient Operations Squadron is unwavering. Behind this continued success of this organization, you will find the foundation of this establishment, 50 upstanding and mission-focused medical professionals that deliver world-class medical care to our nation's heroes.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our inactivation ceremony. Please be seated for the 48th Surgical Operations Squadron Change of Command.